Lewis structures, organic. In this video, we'll draw Lewis structures for some organic molecules that do not break the octet rule, and we'll assign formal charges within the molecule because we always want to do this to double check to make sure that our structure is okay. We've already talked about general Lewis structure guidelines. I'm going to review them in this video, but if you haven't watched earlier videos on drawing Lewis structures, you should go back and look at those. So remember, we want to add up all of our valence electrons, make a skeletal structure by connecting each of the elements with one bond, distribute the remaining electrons to satisfy the octet rule, which may mean that we then need to add double or triple bonds. We also want to check for common exceptions at this point. There won't be any in this section because we're talking about organic molecules and we won't have any of these common octet breaking atoms, but you should check for them regardless. And then lastly, check the formal charges. If we can minimize them by moving around electrons, we should do so. And lastly, double check to make sure that all electrons are count and present. So let's start. Here we have C2H4. We should count up our electrons, so we have four from each carbon, plus one from each hydrogen, which gives us 12 electrons. We'll need that at the, at the end to double check to make sure that everything is okay. We attach our two carbons where there are two hydrogens on each side. Now let's see what would happen if we just try to add electrons. We have two, four, six, eight, ten electrons added so far, so we would only have two left. But now, this carbon wouldn't have an octet. And so we don't have enough electrons. We're short two electrons, so we're going to need to add one more bond in. We'll erase those two electrons and instead use them to form a double bond. And now we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons. And so all of our electrons are accounted for. And each carbon has an octet because each carbon has four bonds which is eight electrons, and so we are all set. Now, let's move on to C3H4. Here we have four electrons for each carbon. We have one electron for each hydrogen, giving us 16 electrons. We'll attach our carbons together, and we'll put our hydrogens on each one. Now, this is a case where if we try to put our hydrogens on each one, we may wind up not actually doing it correctly. You need to know a little bit about this before you start distributing the hydrogens. We can see right away that we're not going to have enough electrons. So let's, let's just go ahead and add our hydrogens in. Now, if you had tried to add these to the central carbon, eventually you would have ended up at a point where you couldn't make it work, for lack of a better word, where your outside carbons wouldn't have enough bonds and your inside carbon would have too many, and you could rearrange to this. Now, if we try to distribute our remaining electrons, you can see that we have 12 electrons so far. We have four left, and you can see that we end up short because right now only this carbon has a full octet. This one and this one are both short electrons. So we need to add two more bonds. We can do two different things. We can add a bond here and a bond here, or we could choose to add two bonds here. If we do this one, we're going to need to move around our hydrogens a bit too, which is not a problem. We can put one hydrogen here. So either of these would be acceptable Lewis structures for C3H4. Now you may ask which one's more correct. You would need more information to be able to know that. Um, these are just two different molecules, and so you would need some other form of information to let you know. Now our last one. We'll add up our electrons, so we can double check that at the end. Now, we need to recognize something here. This carbon has no hydrogens on it, which means right away that this carbon is going to need to have four bonds, because carbon needs to have eight electrons. And when we go to draw this, that'll help us when we get to here. Because, because we can see that this carbon 
already has four bonds. We're not going to be able to draw a bond right here. This needs to stay a single bond. So when we get to this carbon, we actually need to do something a little different than what you might think. We have to do this. Because that's the only way to get four bonds on that carbon. And you may say, but what if I do it in a chain? What if I draw a full chain of them? Like this. And we can try. But remember, we're not allowed any hydrogens on this carbon. So to get an octet there, the most we can do is add in a double bond to this oxygen and a lone pair. Now when we get to this oxygen, we would have to add a lone pair and then we can add in our pairs for chlorine, which gives us the right number of electrons. So let's see why that doesn't work. This is the first time where we really need to look at our formal charges. So let's go through and do our formal charges for each atom. Let's start with this carbon. It came in with four electrons, and now it owns one electron from each bond, which gives it four. So it has a formal charge of zero. Now let's look at this carbon. It came in with four valence electrons. It owns one electron from each bond. It has a formal charge of zero. And let's look at this oxygen. It came in with six valence electrons. It owns its own lone pairs, so that gives us four, plus one from each bond, which gives us six, which gives us a formal charge of zero. That's great, we have all our formal charges zero. Now, let's look at this other one that we tried to draw, which I did to show you what might happen if you think to put them all in a row. On this carbon, we have our four valence electrons. It owns one from each bond, and so we're still at a formal charge of zero. So that's great. Now let's look at this carbon, though. It had a formal charge of zero. Er, now let's look at this carbon. It had four valence electrons, and now it owns its own lone pairs and one from each bond, which gives it five electrons, which is the charge of negative one. And this oxygen came in with six valence electrons, and now it has one from each bond, which is three, plus its own lone pair, which is five, which gives it a formal charge of plus one. And this formal charge makes this an unlikely molecule to have happen. It's so the one we have over here is definitely our best Lewis structure. One quick thing, we should add in our lone pairs on chlorine. It's very common to get a little bit lazy with that as we go along drawing these, but we always want to add them in at the end, if you don't add them in sooner. So just our quick tips and tricks, these are actually just ways of minimizing formal charge. But I want to point out again, remember that our carbon generally has four bonds and zero lone pairs, which will give you a formal charge of zero and an octet. Nitrogen generally has three bonds and one lone pair, and oxygen generally has two bonds and two lone pairs. So if you keep these three in mind for your organic structures, you're going to find that they're a lot easier to do because you're automatically minimizing your formal charges just by doing this sort of thing. Now, remember that this is often. It doesn't mean always. It means that generally it will do this. So keep in mind there are often lots and lots of rules that get broken here, especially next year when you get to learn about when you get to break these rules. So in summary, we've made Lewis structures for molecules that follow the octet rule, um, specifically in this podcast for organic structures that follow the octet rule. And we talked again about how to assign formal charges. Remember, there's an earlier podcast where we walk through this in a little bit more detail. Um, this is definitely something you want to do whenever there's a doubt about which structure to use or whether to add lone pairs versus a bond. Um, although sometimes you'll find that 
the structures just only have one option and then you don't necessarily need to do it unless I ask for it.